What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to talk about kite foiling gear and things you should look for when buying a beginner setup. Let's go. One, three, five, go! Coming from the wild, wild west indeed. Okay guys, so welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to talk about everything you need to know about kite foiling gear. I'm gonna be using my Levitas kite foils as an example to show you guys. But basically this knowledge and what I'll be talking about will be able to transfer over to pretty much any foil setup and any brand. So yeah, let's go. Okay, so yeah, basically there are four key components to a kite foiling setup. First one being the board, obviously, and then you got your mast, then you got your fuselage, and then you got your front wing. And all these things kind of turn your setup into a very easy beginner setup or turn your setup into a more race speed foil. So yeah, today we're gonna to touch on kind of what setup's best for beginners and why certain wings do what and why certain mass lengths do what. Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty details of the setup. Basically, when you're starting off foiling, you want a fairly big front wing because that makes the foil a lot more stable, a lot more predictable and a lot easier to ride than a much smaller front wing. And then another big component to enjoying the process of learning how to foil is having a short mass. Levitas makes a 60 centimeter, which is a really nice size for learning because you can hop on the foil and get up on the foil and kind of figure things out. But when it starts kicking out and wants to like kick you off, because you're so close to the water, you just kind of land back down and it allows you to continue doing that until you can kind of find the sweet spot. So key things you should look for when you're buying a beginner setup is a big, fat, juicy front wing and a short mast. And another thing you wanna think about when picking up your first foil setup ever is what material you're gonna go for. Basically, there are two types. There's full carbon and then there's aluminum. And what are the main differences between the two? Basically, aluminum's way cheaper, but it's nowhere near as efficient as a full carbon setup and also aluminum foils have a high chance of seizing up so you can't really leave them together whereas carbon foils are like the most high-end the most efficient the most beautiful foil you can get you can kind of leave it together and it never seizes up and the cool thing about levitas is it actually offer a hybrid setup which gives you a carbon mast and a carbon wing and the joints are basically aluminum so where the fuselage goes to and also the actual base plate for the board are aluminum and that's kind of the best compromise, I think, because it gives you a cheaper setup, but the actual main components of the foil are still really efficient, like the wing and the back wing and also the mast. So yeah, this is definitely a key thing to decide. Obviously, price is a big thing. Aluminum's way cheaper, carbon's way more expensive, but the hybrid's kind of the best in between, I think, because you can kind of get something that's gonna last you for a very long time. It's a setup that you can adjust and really grow into. And then also your board. Your board makes a huge difference. The more volume your board has, kind of like the Levitas Match, the Levitas Match is a great board for learning on because it's pretty long, has pretty good volume, and that's good for a few things. The volume is good for basically allowing you to stand up on the board and just ride on the board without popping up on the foil. That volume allows you to just have a bit more time to do that. And then also the length helps a lot because the longer the board is, it's the less likely the nose is to dive in. When you kind of go up, pop back down, you'll just actually land down versus digging in like you would riding something like the Levitas EXO, which is a board I ride pretty much all the time. And then another great thing about the Levitas Match is that the edges of the board are tapered. What does that mean? Basically, they have these little flat spots on the edge of the board, which allow the board to kind of bounce off the water. So again, when you're riding, if you were to like catch the edge of the board it will kind of just release and bounce back up whereas if you have a board that's skinny and sharp or has flat edges uh, it will stop biting and that's why it's a more advanced setup so yeah for Levitas the best beginner setup is basically the cruiser front wing paired up with the 60 centimeter mast as well as the match board so yeah and that pretty much covers the gear the only other thing to think about with the levita setup is the fuselage they have a few different fuselages basically the standard length one is the best one because it's the most stable most predictable but as you want to get more advanced you can bump down to the shorter fuselage which is what i've been riding for like doing little pop tricks and stuff like that but yeah generally the basics of any kite foiling setup is you want to make sure you have a big fat wing 
short mast, big board, you know, just kind of like when you're learning how to kite on a normal twin tip. You want a bigger board, kind of a more buoyant board, because this allows you to spend more time riding, even if you're not that efficient. There she is, Megan's up on the board. Look at her go. <laughs> how you doing, girl? Ooh. Look at her go. Like a fish? <laughs> Megan says she thinks she might have hit something. That's the thing with falling. Every now and again, you can like graze fish. So maybe she hit a little fish. Okay, so once you've nailed down your kite pulling setup, there's a few things you should know about actually attaching it to your board. With the Levitas kite foil setup, there's a few adjustments. You can kind of go all the way to the back of the board, kind of very forward on the board, or in the center, kind of just increments to adjust. I kind of run mine on the four setting, but if you're just starting out, if you're brand new to foiling, I recommend pushing it a little bit further back, because the further back the foil is, is the less likely it is to pop up as soon as you get going. Whereas the further you move the foil forward, is the easier it is to pop up. So that can be good for a few things. You know, if it's really light wind, if you're really good at foiling, you just want it to pop up straight away, you could have it more forward. But in the beginning, you don't want that. The foil is gonna pop up pretty much every time you get going. So you wanna have it fairly far back, and that should allow you to kinda figure out what's happening underneath your feet. <laughs> is it tiring? Yeah. <laughs> is it as hard as you thought it would be? Yeah. Or is it harder? I would, no, I was expecting it. Because you're doing super good, baby. You've had like three or four goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're already starting to get short of the rides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the short mass helps like a lot. Because yeah, if you're on a tall sure. mass, that would be a nightmare. But it's nightmare. crazy because you get up and you're like, am I even standing on anything? Yeah, because it's so have, smooth. Like, you have no traction. So you're yeah. just kind of like, am I going? And you're like, wipe out. <laughs> Okay guys, so yeah, that pretty much sums up today's video. This is a quick little video to give you a little bit of knowledge about, you know, how foils work, why they have different wing sizes, why they have different mass sizes, why they have different boards. So yeah, hopefully this video helps you kind of understand that stuff. If it did, I'd really appreciate it if you guys subscribe, leave some comments down below. This is just the first video in a series of videos that I'm going to be doing all about kite foiling with the hopes of teaching and just educating you guys on kite foiling so when you buy a setup or you go and give it a go it's fun and you don't end up wasting your money and you don't end up like getting scared away from foiling because you're on the wrong setup and not enjoying the process of learning something new so yeah with that said guys hopefully i'll see you guys again soon in another video feel free to check out the description of this video all the gear i talked about will be linked in the description as well as my patreon page uh, Patreon basically allows me to continue making these videos, allows me to connect with you guys more, allows me to kind of answer one-on-one -on -one questions that you, get, that you guys may have on kiteboarding or anything kite related. So yeah guys, that's pretty much it. Big thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys soon. Peace, love and big ups. There we go, down loop. Oh shit. Oh shit, move. Let's go, let's go. Oh no. Oh no. No. Whoops! Don't want to do that. Hopefully, I can get it back up. Looking a little bit stuck right now. <laughs> <laughs>